We have big EV news today as Honda announced their first mass-produced electric vehicle called the Prologue, and Volvo is prioritizing America as its EV home ground. Over at Honda News, new Honda Prologue SUV begins next chapter in brands EV direction in North America. Now I did make a video a while back about the Prologue and how it was trademarked, but I thought it was going to be maybe an electric coupe, kind of like the Prelude was. Well, the Prelude wasn't electric, but you, you know what I'm saying, because it's such a similar name that I, I figured it would be a coupe. Well, it's gonna be an SUV, probably the same size as like a, a CRV or something like that. Now, the Prologue will be on sale in North America for the 2024 model year as a highly competitive SUV with functionality expected by Honda customers, but it's probably gonna be available early 2024 is what I'm guessing. Prologue name model symbolizes first in a new series of uh, volume Honda battery electric vehicles. Now, Honda is going off the deep end in a good or bad way. We don't know how, what the future is going to entail, but they're going full electric, which, which includes hydrogen fuel cells by 2040. And I think by 2035, 80% they're hoping to be fully electric. And then 2030, they're hoping 40%. Uh, so things are going to be changing quite quickly for Honda here. And we're going to be talking about Gondam today, the alliance between Honda and General Motors. General Motors is building this EV for Honda, the Prologue. They're also building the Acura one. Now, the Acura one is going to come out maybe late 2024 as a 2025 model year or maybe early 2025. And that's going to be a redesigned, uh, a different interior as well as the Cadillac Lyric, uh, which is definitely more of a mid-size SUV. Now, the other vehicle where the Trailblazer is made, Honda is going to be producing, or I should say General Motors is gonna be producing this Honda vehicle in Mexico where the Trailblazer is made currently, and that was just pumped full of a billion dollars to switch it over to an electric factory. Uh, so that will be coming out of Mexico. And I know a lot of you guys are thinking, Kirk, I don't want my first Honda EV to be a General Motors EV. Well, you're going to have to wait for that. But there is light at the end of the tunnel if you want a Honda only made electric vehicle. So referring to the Prologue and the Acura EV, they will utilize the highly flexible global EV platform powered by Ultium batteries based on the company's strategic partnership with General Motors, hashtag Gondam. Honda also plans to launch a new series of EV models in the second half of the decade based on a new e-architecture with development led by Honda. It makes you wonder, it's like, well, development led by Honda, are they going to be uh, also producing General Motors vehicles? I think that's a possibility. They could be producing vehicles for General Motors uh, with this new e-architecture, but it's really gonna be a Honda underneath. But yes, you're going to have to wait to the second half of the decade, so 2025 plus to get your hands on uh, a Honda designed and a Honda platform EV here in the States because the first wave is going to be uh, General Motors Honda badged vehicles. So how will the Prologue by Honda be different from the General Motors vehicles built on the same platform? Well, Honda's designing the exterior and the interior. So in theory, it could look extraordinarily different and feel extraordinarily different on the inside. But in terms of driving, it's going to drive exactly the same. I don't expect any suspension changes uh, or powertrain changes differing from GM to Honda. And it's safe to say that the Acura will probably be just a reskinned, redesigned interior as well of the Cadillac Lyric. I think that's pretty safe to say. And I know a lot of you are hesitant about this, but I think it's good for Honda in the short term because they are they're they're kind of behind the curve here when it comes to electric vehicles. There's no denying that. That's why they're like, okay, well, we're going to team up with General Motors and we can scratch their back in the future as we develop this, uh, our, our own platform. So I guess it's better for Honda to have electric products on the market before their own platform comes online, uh, even if it's a General Motors vehicle underneath. But guys, I'll see you in the comments below on Gundam. And we have Volvo as well on the channel. I've just included them in the roundabout of news. And I will be getting a uh, XC90 recharge next week. I'm really excited uh, to, to see and test that vehicle as well. Volvo's US assembly plant will go all electric. We're over at Automotive News. And this South Carolina factory 
is going to be producing uh, three vehicles. Uh, the S60, which it already produces, but that will be going fully electric, uh, and the whole brand will be fully electric by 2030. They're also going to be producing the Polestar 3 crossover uh, in America at the South Carolina plant, and they're also going to be producing the fully electric XC90 uh, when that comes online in the next couple of years as well. So big things happening for Volvo in America and that is really good to see. You want to see uh, Americans being uh, employed, building these vehicles here stateside. Now, we don't have a lot of information on uh, the Polestar 3 or uh, the XC90 electric. And it's hard to say because Volvo's not even sharing uh, their battery source. And I think the closest battery source to them, and I could be wrong, but it could be the new SK Innovations battery plants that are in Georgia, which is not far from South Carolina, as you guys know, or maybe you don't <laughs> know. But that makes the most sense to me. SK Innovations uh, just got greenlit to produce batteries here. They had an issue with trade secrets being stolen from LG Chem. Uh, but they will be producing batteries for the Hyundai and Kia uh, electric vehicles here in the States. Uh, the Ford F-150 Lightning. Uh, or is it just the Ford Lightning? I don't know, maybe it's not F1. Yes, anyways, as well as some Volkswagen ID4 vehicles will get batteries from SK Innovation. So to me, that makes the most sense, but they could use LG Chem like Honda is doing through General Motors. So we'll find out in the near term, probably very soon. But going back to automotive news, the factory has an operation capacity of 150,000 vehicles, only 26,000 and 500 S60 sedans were built there last year. So it's they're just out of a fraction of their production capacity. But starting late next year, the plant will begin assembling the first electric crossovers. Uh, Polestar will launch a, a production version, or should say a production uh, com competitor of it, like the Porsche Cayenne electric vehicle. And more significantly, Volvo will begin production of a battery version of its best-selling XC90 large crossover in South Carolina. That is really cool. And I've been a big fan of the SC or the XC90 for a long time. I've always enjoyed the styling of the vehicle. The interiors are phenomenal. And I just like Volvo as a company. I think their history is quite amazing, uh, being so ingrained with safety and just a quirky automaker. They're so weird and I like that about them and I just enjoy covering them. So I'm going to feature them on the channel going forward. Now, Volvo could also add production of electric next generation XC60 midsize crossover in late 2024. That's when the Acura rebadged Lyric will be coming out. Um, so that could be about the same size. It's hard to say. Uh, the Lyric isn't out yet, but XC60 midsize crossover fully electric, as well as the XC90 being built here in America alongside the Polestar 3. I think this is really exciting news uh, for Volvo and for the channel as well, because guys, you better believe that I'm going to be getting my hands on these vehicles one day. Now, why is Volvo building these electric cars in America? Well, they want to avoid tariffs. And if they import all their Polestars from China, uh, then there's like a 27 and a half here it is seven and 27 and a half percent tariff on Chinese made vehicles can't make money doing it like that. So that's why they're setting up the production plant here in America to build these EVs and EVs are heavy. So when you're talking about, uh, moving them around, that also goes into the costs of shipping these heavy battery electric vehicles around the world. And they say it also reduces your CO2 footprint which is important is what these companies want to be carbon neutral as time goes on. But they kind of go back on that by saying Volvos can be exported overseas, even if they're produced here. So they're, it's all supply and demand, right? If they need more of these EVs to be shipped across the world, they'll definitely do that if it makes financial sense to them, number one. And then CO2 thing, yeah, it's it's definitely not as important to these companies as making money is. <laughs> and initially, the factory will be the global production center for the XC90 battery electric. So they will be shipping the XC90s out across the globe initially. It seems like it's going to be uh, online first here in America and then probably Sweden and China as well. And guys, just a reminder, Volvo Cars Tech Moment, I will be live streaming June 30th, 8 a.m., 
Eastern time. Here's the agenda. It'll be a lot of fun. Bring your snacks and drinks for that. Guys, if you enjoyed the video, smash the like button, subscribe for more automotive news. I mainly just cover Japanese and Korean cars, but Volvo has just been added to the mix. So yeah, as time goes on, I'll just cover the cars that I enjoy covering. Like I said, Porsche might be on that list one day and I'll end it there. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.